Whereas on the 22nd day of September in the year of our Lord, 1862, a proclamation was issued by the President of the United States containing, among other things, the following to wit that on the first day of January in the year of our Lord, 1863, all persons held as slaves within any state or designated part of a state, the people whereof shall then be in rebellion against the United States, shall be then, thenceforward, and forever free. And the executive government of the United States, including the military and naval authority thereof, will recognize and maintain the freedom of such persons, and will do no act or acts to repress such persons or any of them in any efforts they may make for their actual freedom. The essence and significance of President Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation is captured in the paragraph I just read. Much has been written and could be further debated in the article about Lincoln's decree. Was it merely an act to bolster the Union's war effort? It certainly did so. Did it really free the slaves? It was the 13th Amendment ratified by most states by the end of 1865, which actually prohibited involuntary servitude and made slavery illegal. Ironically, in spite of its actual limitations, President Lincoln knew both the importance of the proclamation and the controversy that would ensue. He told F.B. Carpenter, the artist, that as he took up the pen to sign the paper, his hand shook so violently that he could not write. I could not for a moment control my arm. I paused, and a superstitious feeling came over me, which made me hesitate. However, just before signing the document, he said, I never in my life felt more certain that I was doing the right thing than I do in signing this paper. His premonition was correct. To this day, we celebrate the Emancipation Proclamation as the beginning of the end of America's dark era of slavery. While the 13th Amendment legally tied things up, it is the Emancipation Proclamation that we remember. And so it is because of the courage and brave leadership of President Abraham Lincoln that we honored his birthday in February. Following the 1863 proclamation signing, celebrations certainly took place, particularly among freed slaves and many abolitionists. It also served to strengthen the support for the North from European allies. On the other hand, the Emancipation Proclamation was widely attacked at the time as freeing only the slaves over which the Union had no power, Confederate states. Also, many in the North were supportive of the war effort to bring the Union together, but not as a vehicle to end slavery. And in practice, it committed the Union to ending slavery, which was still controversial in the North. Lincoln persisted, however, and in later weeks and months, he did everything he could to confirm his view that it was an act of justice. As Lincoln approached re-election in November of 1864, his political advisors increasingly told him that his Emancipation Proclamation was dragging him down, pointing out that Northerners were willing to shed blood to restore America, but not to abolish slavery. They were increasingly concerned that if he made abolition a condition for peace, he would be beaten badly in the presidential race. Lincoln knew how high the stakes as he penned in a dark message written and sealed in August of 1864. This morning, as for the some days past, it seems exceedingly probable that this administration will not be reelected. Then it will be my duty to cooperate with the president-elect as to save the Union between the election and the inauguration, as he will have secured his election on such ground that he cannot possibly save it afterwards. Lincoln was referring to Democratic opponent General George McClellan, who would have been compelled by war Democrats and Copperheads to shut down the war, probably meaning the end of the United States of America. Even considering the stakes, Lincoln remained steadfast to the emancipation, remaining true to his words, if slavery is not wrong, nothing is wrong. As it turned out, due in part to a crack up in the Democratic Party and a well-timed victory by Union General Sherman in Atlanta, Lincoln won by a landslide and thus preserved the Union. As I see it, of all Lincoln's qualities as an elected leader, and they were many, perhaps his greatest, was that of political will, without which the fight of freedom for all might not have happened. In his words, be sure you put your feet in the right place, then stand firm. 
We should all be exceedingly grateful that Abraham Lincoln did. And remember that quality as we choose leaders in the future. I'm John Longstreet with another edition of the Longstreet Beat. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you again next time.